I want to talk about ARIMA time series models. Now, these, this is just an extension of the autoregressive moving average, or ARMA, or ARMA model um, that I previously discussed. And if you haven't seen that one, you may want to watch that video before you watch this, one's, this one. Uh, the difference is that there's just one more parameter, that's D. You may recall from the ARMA model, you have a P and a Q. P refers to the number of autoregressive lags, and Q refers to the number of error term lags. Now, the ARIMA model has an extra parameter D, and that actually has to do with differencing the data. And we're going to do that if the data is not stationary. So you may recall that the ARMA PQ model is given by um, beta 0, right, some constant here, and then some coefficient times y lagged 1 period, y lagged 2 periods, all the way out to y lagged p periods. And then you have another coefficient here, phi 1, times the error term lagged 1 period, and then the error term lagged 2 periods, etc., all the way out to q periods. And then plus you have an error term for the current period. <clears throat> now suppose you plot y and you get something like this, where you have um, this data series over time that is clearly not stationary. Well, it looks like the variance is pretty constant. It's pretty clear that the mean is not constant. Right? It's trending upwards, so you can't apply the standard ARMA or ARMA models to this data. So what we can do is we can try differencing the data. And I actually have a video where I discussed a little bit about stationarity. And let's define a new variable z, and it's the first difference of y. So zt is going to be equal to yt um, y in period t plus 1 minus y in period t. And when you do that, this may make the series stationary. Now you can apply these ARMA or ARMA models. So let's say after, after differencing, you get data that looks something like this. Now this appears to be stationary, right? Sort of constant variance and a constant mean. So when we do the ARIMA model, the I stands for integrated, so it's autoregressive integrated moving average, and it's given by ARIMA PDQ, as I mentioned before. So the standard model would, for example, be a 1, 1, 1 model. The data differenced once. The um, <clears throat> autoregressive component only having one lagged period and only one lagged error term as given by this. So ZT is going to be have one lagged um, Z variable and one lagged error term. Now, if it turns out that ZT is not stationary, you could possibly difference it again. So what would you do? You define a new variable and you would difference Z. So that would be WT, for example, as our new variable is ZT plus 1 minus ZT. So again, our ARIMA 1, 2, 1 model would have one lagged W term and one lagged error term, just like in the 1, 1, 1 model. But now instead of doing ZT, we're doing WT. Of course, you don't have to, you're not limited to only one lagged AR um, variable and one lagged um, error term variable. Again, you could have many of them. So you could have, you know, uh, Z lagged 1 period, Z lagged 2 periods, all the way out to Z lagged P periods. And then similarly, the error term, you could have it lagged 1 period, 2 periods, all the way out to Q periods. And of course, you have the um, current periods error term. <clears throat> now, once you fit a good model for Z, you'd like to forecast Y not z, right? Remember, you've, you've estimated the model for z, but you want to forecast for y. 
So let's recall that ZT equals YT plus 1 minus YT. So let's suppose that the last observation you have is YL, L for last. And you'd like to forecast one period into the future, and we'll call that YK. Then ZT, we know, um, here was equal to YT plus 1 minus YT. If we add YT to both sides, we get ZT plus YT equals YT plus 1. Right? Let's just rearrange it so this is on the left-hand side of the equation. We'll call that K. And remember, this is one period ahead of these two variables. So YK is going to be equal to ZK minus 1 plus YK minus 1. And what you would do is you just keep substituting in for this YK minus 1. Here you would have plus ZK minus 2 plus YK minus 2, etc., etc. Right? And then you would substitute in for YK minus 2 you would substitute in, it would be z k minus 3, y k minus 3, and you'll keep doing that. And what you do is you get the summation of i equals 1 to k minus l of z k minus i plus y l, the last um, observation. Now, you don't really have to do this because any econometric program that you're using like, um, you know, eViews is going to do this for you for the forecasting, but just so you get an idea of exactly what the um, what the program is doing. So again, the whole idea of this ARIMA model is, you know, you're trying to fit a model for some time series data. You're going to use an autoregressive and a moving average term, and because the data is not stationary, you're going to difference the data. So in this case, we took you know the first differencing. So this is a you know a popular time series model in economics and finance, and I hope you found this useful.